Hi folks, welcome back to some more PJ2 2K23. Now, a couple of videos ago, I mentioned that one of the designers got in touch with me and he was doing a massive project and he wanted to know if I wanted to do a video on it. Well, if you look at the name there, the CLV24, of course I wanted to do a video on it. Now, if you're not familiar with the CLV24, if you've just come into 2K23, back in 2K21, 2K19, you brought courses like um, Pinehurst No. 2, Whistling Straits, Magnolia National, which was his uh, rendition of Augusta National, and plenty of other courses as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump into this, and I'm going to start reading out some of the article. He's actually sent me an extensive article. It's three pages of it. He's, he's emailed me with pictures and artwork and everything on it. Now, I'm just going to go through and pick some of this stuff out to read as we're going ar around the course. And of course, there's going to be a bit of history and all that in there as well. So don't worry about my gameplay. This is more about the, the history of the course and how we've sort of brought it back to life in, in the game. So what it says here. Well, I'll tell you what, let me just get the old um, sky cam up. We'll go up and have a look at the plot and then we'll come back down and we'll have a look around the course. Okay, back in early June of 2022, an Instagram comment from Tom Doak hinting at the possibility of a revamped or redone or partially or partially restored or whatever you want to call it high point golf club in traverse city now there's actually uh, the instagram post there as well as i said there's loads of artwork and pictures and everything here that you, you will be able to see once he, he, he sort of posts it oh now bear with me guys because i'm doing this on two screens and So I'm reading off one screen and try to guide the camera on the other screen. And there's also links there to magazine articles from Traverse City in Michigan and things like that there as well. So my high point scoop did not formulate out of thin air. Of course, Tom's comment was in response to an early glimpse that I posted of a PGA Tour 2K21, now 2K23 project aimed at bringing the original high point course to life. And there's a lovely sketch there as well of the of an aerial view of the course lovely little practice green area there uh, we're going to just run down here onto the first tee and we'll go down first fairway here while i scroll down as detailed in many of the articles linked above as i said all this will be in i'll put a link in the description to the forum post where he's going to release all this article as detailed in many of the articles linked above, the story of the original High Point is that Tom Doak built the course in 1989. It being his first ever 18-hole design, the then public course closed in 2008 as a result of the recession, which is a shame. I'd imagine quite a few courses shut down due to the recession in 2008. With the land that the front nine sits on being sold to what would become Michigan local hops, which would go on to become perhaps the most famous hops farm in Michigan golf, if not all of golf. <laughs> the back nine, which sits on land that was, note the past tense, heavily treed and even more undulating than the front nine, was ne never developed. All right, where were I? As I said, bear with me, guys. I'm doing this off two different screens here. Heavily treated and more undulating than the front nine, was never developed and sits mostly untouched to this day. The exception is the latter half of the 16th hole, the full 17th hole, and the 18th tee were all lost. And there's another little bit of artwork there. I began this dis digital restoration process well before knowing that a real life resurrection of the course was even a possibility. My idea for the project was sparked by Peter Flory's digital restoration of the original Lido course. Now, I've also got a video of uh, the Lido course, which was done in 2K21 or 2K19. And there's also a link in that video to a golf channel video about the history and all that of the course as well. Absolutely fantastic. And the way they recreated it as well, actually brilliant. I'll put a link to that at the end of this video. Okay. <clears throat> which ultimately led, ultimately led to the real-life resurrection of the Lido course at Sand Valley, led by, coincidentally, Tom Doak. Using the same software as Peter, along with an ingenious tool created by a user allowing elevation data to be imported into the software. So what he's, what he's on about there is one of the 
the guys from the community he actually made a little program that you can take LiDAR data and actually put it into the game. That's why you got all these LiDAR data courses in the game. It was actually one of the community guys that actually made the little tool for it. Okay, I began snooping around to the former High Point area to see what kind of info might still be available on the original course. Fortunately enough, there was elevation data in existence from 2009, prior to the redevelopment of the land on the front line, which preserved just about all of the original contours of the golf course. Now, I'll try to look for the next tee here. Again, guys, I do apologize. I'm going from one screen to the other. I think this might be here. No, that's the way I just came. So it must be... Ah, there it is over there. I believe, I think. <laughs> Once the elevation uh, data was discovered, bringing the course back to life was mostly a matter of using older satellite imagery to match surfaces, fairways, greens, bunkers, etc. to their contours within the elevation data. It sounds easy enough, but you have to remember that back when the course was still in existence, mainly the 90s and the early 2000s, it wasn't a given that high resolution sat satellite imagery was available everywhere, especially in an area like Northern Michigan. For the relatively wide open front nine, this generally was not a hindrance, but not, for, not so for the back nine, which was heavily shadowed by all of the trees, trying to make out whether a blurry smudge on a satellite image is a bunker, a cart path, or just something, or just nothing at all can make a person feel a little insane after a while. Now, I kind of agree with him there. One of the designers um, let me have a look at his LiDAR data on a course that he was doing. And it's quite hard to kind of see what is what, to be honest. All the little lines and paths and stuff like that. Okay, simply replicating some golf holes from the past is one task. But in a fully interactive piece of software, bringing a course to actual life and making it feel real when playing it means really trying to understand what the environment looked like and how to recreate it. This includes things like trees, bushes, grasses, buildings, and what the surrounding non-golf areas were like. Not an easy task when dealing with a course that only ever so slightly caught the beginning of the internet golf architecture dockery phase, which is true, I suppose. Back in the 80s, just coming into the 90s, the, the internet was just kind of taken off. Uh, golf was very popular, but I think once the internet sort of took over, uh, it sort of blew up. And then when you had Tiger and all that coming in as well. Okay, where was I? Right. Doak's most famous course, Pacific Dunes, didn't open until 2001. And the trickle-down effect of interest in all of his previous projects wasn't really in full gear yet. So photos and videos of the course were pretty sparse in existence. Luckily, the... Luckily... There is one pretty good video available on YouTube, which I will touch more on later. In addition to how the course looked, the last element of capturing the essence of the original high point was trying to replicate how the golf holes played, especially the greens. <laughs> I reckon these greens are going to be pretty tough. One of the most notable features of high point. Oh, no, where I, there I am. Again, guys, I do apologize for this. Yeah, one of the most notable features of High Point is that Doak shaped all of the greens himself, a practice that doesn't often occur in his project these days. With this being the first design of the notoriously brash young Tom Doak, you can likely imagine how audacious the surfaces are on. What Tom thinks may still be some of his best greens to date. As nice as it would be, unfortunately it's not a plug and play situation where you once load in the contours and surfaces into the game and everything is replicated perfectly. Right, what's the next? T. It's got to be over uh, this way. Ah, here we are. It takes quite a bit of research, testing and subtle shaping to try and match the gameplay engine to real world expectations. A task made even more difficult by the fact that I've never had the pleasure of seeing or playing the course in person. And again, there's a lovely, lovely picture there of the course in real life and another bit of artwork there. And another delightful twist to this project, and as Tom noted in his early Instagram comment, the drawing was done by Gil Hans, and as I said, that artwork, really, really nice. It's an aerial view of the course. 
We worked with Doak on a project. The drawing is not a perfect representation of the final product, but it's pretty close and was helpful clearing up areas of confusion where satellite visuals were blurry or unhelpful. Now, I do believe that's probably the ninth, and we're probably going to jump over this way, maybe, I think, to the tenth. I don't know. Can't, don't know where it is. <laughs> Let's go up and have a look. That's probably the 18th, actually. I probably took a wrong turn somewhere. No doubt, knowing me. Now, we haven't had a look down this way, so we'll go have a look down this way. One of the best parts of a digital recreation project for me is when I first get the LiDAR, the, uh, LiDAR elevation into the software. And there is nothing else there except for the raw movement of the property. A lovely little lake here as well. Turning the angle of the sun way down generates long shadows highlighting each dip and bump on the course. And from there, I just get to take the whole thing in. As Tom has said in many of articles on High Point, it really is an incredible piece of ground. Uh, for golf. Other than the relatively flat northeast corner of the property, around holes 6, 8 and 9, the land heaves and rolls and provides a relentlessly interesting canvas for golf. And he's got a ton of pictures here uh, that shows you how he's gone about uh, sort of designing the course. Again, this will all be in his forum post, which I will leave a link in the description. Now that's the end of part one. We're gonna go on to part two and three. Now I'm not actually gonna go and read all of that out because it's mainly going hole from hole and telling you how each hole is, is sort of represented in the game or in real life, should I say. Let's go up this way. There's quite a lot of elevation on the course, to be honest. I can't wait to get my get the round in and get it played so I think we've had a good look around the course so I'm going to actually jump down we're going to actually start the round now what I could have done I could have actually took all these pictures and put them into the video and all that as well but it, it probably would have took over an hour and most people won't sit and watch something like that so let's just jump down here we'll have a quick look and then we shall jump on the course We'll head back up towards the clubhouse. Now, I don't think I've been down this way. I'm not sure. As I said, do apologize, guy. It's, it is pretty hard doing it off two screens, um, reading off one screen and trying to guide a camera on the other screen. <laughs> so we've had a good look around the course. So we're going to jump onto the first tee. I'm going to get this played. Really looking forward to this, actually. Okay, so here we go. Oh, the wind's died down a little bit. So let me just jump over to the second email that he's sent me, part two. Okay, so what we've got here, hole one, 384 yards, par four. Let's see if we can hit a nice drive. Now, I am on master settings. I should have put it on pro while I was reading stuff in that out. Because it's, as again, I said, it's not about my gameplay. It's about the history of the course and stuff like that and how he's kind of brought it back to life. Oh, not bad for master. <laughs> not bad at all. Okay, early plans for the new course at High Point appear to indicate that portions of the previous back nine, namely the original holes, 10 to 15, will be reused in the new routing. Additionally, the latter half of the original 18 hole, 18th hole will be revamped as part of what appears to be a new par 4. The original was a par 5. Right, let me just take this shot here. I've got a nine mile an hour wind coming in from the right. For the lucky few who will get to frequent the new edition of High Point, early reports indicate that the new club plans to be both private and quite exclusive. This virtual tour of the original High Point back nine will simply be a refresher for what is to come. Okay, let's see how these greens are. And you know me, I'm terrible on this three-click system at putting. <laughs> but we shall see how we go. As again, I said, it's not about the 
my playing ability. This is about the, the course and how we sort of brought it back to life. Now, from here on, it goes through all the holes, front nine, back nine, and stuff like that. So I'm just going to concentrate on the actual game now. As I said, there will be a link in the description. <laughs> Let's put that up to the driver. So we've got second hole. It's a par four, 363 yards and one foot up. I was actually looking at a picture there. <laughs> that landed way in the rough. So we've got 79 yards, 16 feet up, 79 to 87% lie. So let's put that up probably two clubs, 12 mile an hour wind as well. I might actually put that up three clubs. Oh, that was terrible. Yeah, again, guys, I will put a link in the description <clears throat> over to the forum post over at TGC Tours. If you, you're going to play the course, what you want to do is go through it as well. As I said, part two and three of the article goes through everything, all the holes. He's got a, a screenshot of the in-game and a screenshot of the original course as well. So it's very nicely done. As I said, it's a very extensive article that he's done. Really, really nice. Really, really well done. Right. Oh, look at this. Downhill. One foot down. Just want this close. Oh, that's turned even more than I thought. That might go off the green. No, nope, it's going to hold. Nice. It's for par. Did we get it? Yes. Nice par save there. What are we actually on? Um, yeah, we're on even, so that's not too bad. Okay, third hole. That hole, par four, 462 yards, 26 feet down. And you've got quite a big camber here, left to right, uh, right to left on the fairway. What we might actually do is just bring it in a little bit from the left. So I'll play it into the, the slope. Hopefully that hasn't went too far to the right. That should be fine. It should kick off to the left here a little bit. Nice. Okay, 140 yards, 11 feet up. So it's playing around about 144. Seven mile an hour wind coming in from the right. We should be good, probably just to go straight at it here. I'll tell you what, I've got one more club and we'll bring it back just a touch. Probably to about there. We're on that little slope there as well. Should be pretty good. No, that's gonna go off the back. Yeah, I should have brought that back just a little bit more there. Left with a little chip. Ooh, so close. That was that bottom dial, way off the mark. Now, why did I read this one out on hole four? <laughs> this is going to be a pretty tough green, I think. Okay, hole four. Okay, I'm no Tom Doak expert, but I know this has to be his first Redan, right? The first of several in his career. I don't know, I don't have the experience to say where this ranks among his Redans, but I know it has all of the usual features of a Redan, which is something that you just didn't get to experience much on a public golf course. As you can see, sort of three tier there, I think. That actually slopes quite a lot from front to back. Okay, right, so it's a par three, 192 yards, six feet down. Got eight mile an hour wind right at us. I think I'm gonna have to go with a little five hybrid here, I reckon. It should be on a green, but it's actually gonna go right at the pin. But as I said, the, the green slopes from front to back here, so it might make its way down a little bit towards the hole. Well, that's not too bad from where I am. Oh, 
Oh, I think I've hit that a little bit too pacey. I have. Okay, we should be able to hopefully pick up the par here. Again, way too pacey. Yeah, I should have went with the, the old stick swing instead of the three click. I cannot putt to save my life on this three click. I seem to overdo it too much. Oh, we're up to plus one now, right? Concentration time. <laughs> but as I did say at the front of the, the, the start of the video, it's not about my gameplay here. It's all about the, the golf course. Oh, look at this. That's some nasty little humps and bumps there. I'm actually going to bring this in a little bit from the right. That should work out okay, hopefully. It should hopefully get up there and kick over to the left. Oh, too much. Nope, we're in the rough. Okay, 79 to 88%. Eight iron pitch. That yeah, should be okay, I reckon. Oh, that's going to be pretty good if it holds green. Oh, I thought that was going in, but it's just trickled off the back. That's going to leave us a little chip. The birdie. But we're not going to get it because I can't hit the marks. <laughs> the dials are too fast for me old hands. Ooh, I nearly battered that right over the top of the hole there. Okay, sixth hole, par five. Let's even get a birdie here. But that wind is right in our face. 508 yards, 62 feet down. Lovely drive off the tee. A beautiful course though. Lovely elevations on it. Okay, we should reach the green here. I'm going to put it up to five wood, but I'm going to pull it right back. That wind is going to help us a little bit. Let me have a look. What's a hybrid going to take us? 10 mile an hour wind against us though. So I think I'm going to go with a five wood, but I'm going to bring it back just a little touch there. Oh, that's going to push it a little bit to the left. Yeah, I probably would have been all right with the hybrid. <laughs> I've went way too far there. Yep, should have stuck with the club it gave me. Is that going to hold the green though? Or is it going to trickle off? It's actually held the green, so we've got quite a lengthy putt here. Oh, look at this. 58 feet, one foot up. Right, a little bit of left to right, a little bit of right to left, a little bit of left to right at the end. Let's see how we just try and get it close. And we might get lucky. And uh, we might just get the birdie. Come on, turn, turn. Oh, it's turning. I hit it short. A little bit more pace on that, and I might have had that. Okay, we get a birdie. That takes us back to evens. Okay, seventh hole, par four, 330 yards, 17 feet up. Ooh. Difficult drive, no, unless I bring it in from the left here, I reckon. So we hit a nice one. We've got a perfect on both markers there. That should be good. It doesn't run out at the back there. Come on, hold up, boat. Yeah, that's going to be fine. That's going to leave us a nice little pitch shot on the green. I'm saying this just a little bit. Mind you, we've got that 13 mile an hour wind coming across, but it's not going to really affect that much the pitch. I think we'll play it about here. Wind hopefully is going to push it a little bit. Oh, that's fine. Come on, stop ball. We should be able to pick up the birdie there. Nice. Takes us to minus one. Birdie, birdie. OK, 
Okay, eighth hole, par four, 448 yards, eight feet down. Let's see if we can get another nice one off the tee here. Let's just aim this down the left-hand side of the fairway. Ooh, I missed that marker right at the top, way to the right. So that's pushed it quite a bit to the right. But that is absolutely fine. Lovely. Okay, 143 yards, four feet up. Oh my goodness, look at this. Little tiny shelf we've got to try and land on. That is a nasty green. Wow. <laughs> All right. Gonna have to go up a club here. Let's try them out there, I reckon. Oh, that ball needs to turn. It's looking not bad, actually. Oh, get up, 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 up. Oh, it's not made it. Oh, another foot. That's because I missed both marks. If you miss both marks, it's actually gonna take a little bit of distance off because you're not actually hitting a perfectly good shot. Now, if I hit that perfect, that probably would have been right on the pin, I reckon. Okay, 29 feet, one foot up. Right, what have we got? Okay, a little bit more left to right, I think, there. Nope, let's try a little bit there. That'll do. We'll take the par from there. That second shot. It should have been a bit closer. It's a tough green, that one. Yeah, you might want to make sure your putter is pretty hot when you come to this course. Okay, ninth hole. Par 5. 567 yards. 61 feet up. Checking it perfect with the drive. Let me just take a little quick drink. The reason why I tell you I'm taking a little quick drink is because I, I mute my mic. I've watched people doing videos like that before when they're, they're taking drinks and their mic's still unmuted and it's blah, not a very nice sound when you're sitting listening to somebody slurping away. Okay, 255 yards, 44 feet up. Got that 11 mile an hour wind is going to help us here though. 44 feet up. I think we'll just go with a three wood. If we do go off the back, it's not too bad. It's just going to leave us with a nice little chip. Oh, that's going a little bit to the right. I pushed it. I pushed it. That would have been quite nice as well if I hit that top button. Okay, I don't want to use a chip shot from here. I think I'm going to have to go with a pitch. Bring that all the way back. About there. I might have to just do a little partial shot here. Yeah, even that was a little bit too much. So this is going to be a tough putt. Probably should have just went with the chip shot there, to be honest. Oh, downhill from there. Wow. Right. So I'm just going to have to trickle this down towards the hole. It's gaining speed. Come on. Oh, that wasn't too bad. It's a pity though, par five, and we're only walking away with a par. Okay, on to the back nine. Tenth hole, par four, 421 yards, 36 feet down. Oof, this might run out. That should be okay, I reckon. Again, just push that a little bit to the right. It should be okay, though. That's probably a 150-yard marker there. As long as it holds, it doesn't go off. Yeah, that's okay. It's going to leave us on a pretty bit. Big, big slope right to left here. Okay, 105, 28 feet up. So it's playing around about 115, 114. I think we should be good. That wind's going to help us here. I think I should have moved that a little bit more. 
that's okay. Don't know if it's going to run up towards the, the pin. That's kind of stopped dead there. But not a bad green though. Hopefully we can pick up the birdie here. Oh dear. Turn. No. Oh. oh, just dropped in the side door. Nice. Okay, 11th hole, par 3, 155, three feet up. Oh, that's a small little green, this one. 151, we should be okay if we hit a nice one. Again, push that a little bit to the right. That might not make the green. Now, I'm going to go with a chip here. The last time I went with the pitch and way over hit it. So we'll just go with a little chip shot here. That's exactly what I should have done on that other hole when I used the pitch instead of the chip. <laughs> okay, nice part. Okay, 12th hole, par 4, 417 yards and 30 feet down. That should be good. Lovely. Again, there's a 150 yard marker there in the middle of the fairway. So 115 to the pin. Got that little bit of wind against us. Should be good, I reckon. Just going in there with a sand wedge. I think what I'll do is I'll do that. Just put a de loft it a little bit. It's going to give you a little bit more run on the green. Oh, nice. Hit both markers there. That should be pretty good. That's not bad at all. Gives a chance at a birdie. Oh, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that. But we'll take the par. Okay, 13th hole, it's par four. 432 yards, 33 feet down. Let's have a look. Got quite a bit of a slope here, right to left. It should be okay though. Might just bring in a little touch from the left. That should kick, and that's going to be fine. Well, thought that was going to be closer to the rough on the right-hand side, but that is absolutely fine. Lovely course, though. Okay, 89 yards, 8 feet up, so it's playing around about 92. And we should be good just going in with this club. A little bit of loft, try and get it to stop a bit quicker. Lovely. Right. Definitely gonna get the birdie here. Hopefully. I uh, dunno. Mind you, I've seen I've seen me miss these. Quite a few times. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Look at that. Missed them all. <laughs> How could I miss that? That is oh terrible. Terrible. And that was quite a tame green as well. Little tap. And I missed it. 14th hole, par 4, 390 yards, 4 feet down. Uh, quite a big camber there as well, right to left. I want to try and get the, maybe the ball up on this right-hand side here. But I've got to hit a good one. Not a lot of area there, but that's where I want to put the ball. Oh, lovely. Get in there. Exactly what I wanted it. Nice. That should give us a little sort of flyish spot there. Not bad at all. Okay, now we're firing. Now we're cooking. Lovely. I better not miss this one. <laughs> Yes, birdie, finally, another birdie. K 
Okay, we're on three under. Okay, 15th hole, part three. What we got? 177, 39 feet down. So that is playing around about 164. We've got that wind against us. Put a little bit of loft on it, takes a little bit of the distance off. I kind of pushed that a little bit to the right. If you see, I missed that top marker there. Oh, come on, get on the green at least. Yes, just on the green. Yeah, I can see what you were saying here. Uh, the back nine with all the shadowy, golden shadows with the trees and stuff like that. Uh, it would be kind of hard to sort of tell which is what is what uh, when you're using uh, LiDAR data. Oh, that's turned. <sighs> wow. Didn't think that would turn that much, but it did. So we'll take the par there. Okay, 16th hole, par four, 375 yards and 50 feet down. Ooh, look at this. I'm gonna have to take this around the trees here. Put quite a bit of fade on this. Hopefully that's going to work out okay. Ooh. That's probably because I'm, if you look at the bottom marker there, I'm kind of just missed that bottom marker. Come on, come on. Oh, we're lucky there. Managed to roll it onto the fairway. Okay, 89 yards and 14 feet up. But we've got that nine mile an hour wind going against us as well. Again, push that a little bit to the left. A little bit too much on that as well. Oh, that might actually come back. And it has, lovely. It's one of my biggest things that I don't do. I don't actually read the greens when I'm coming in from the approach shot. I should take more time to sort of read the greens. Nice. I believe that was a was that a birdie? Yes, nice. Up to minus four. Not bad, Master Sense. First time playing it. Okay, 17th hole, par three, 223 yards and 14 feet down. Right. Look at that wind. I think I'm just gonna go with a five iron here. Try and hit near that slope. The wind's gonna push it round as well, just a little bit. That should start turning a little bit to the right here, and it has. Come on, up you go. Go, go, go. Oh, that is nice. Go. Oh, no, go. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh how good would that have been? So close. Oh, no, no. Look at the marker at the top. Can't believe I missed that. Wow. That was terrible. That's probably one of the worst putts I've had. <laughs> 18 toes of par five, nice. Now, as he said in his article, when the course is getting redone, revamped, whatever, I think this is gonna be a par four. Oh, it looks like it's a split fairway as well. We've got aim over to here. Right, three wood. I think I'm going to bring this back to five wood because the three wood would just probably run out, I reckon. That should be good. Lovely. That's nice. Yep, three wood definitely probably would run out at the back there. Okay, now can we reach the green? Five wood, nine mile an hour wind against us here. You know what, I think we could be good just going right at it. Oh, missed both marks. That's gonna come, oh dear. I was gonna say that's gonna come up a bit short. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh. if those were closer to the marks, I would have been bang on the pin there, I think. Okay, a little splash shot. What well, have we got, 82.8%. Let's put it just past the hole a little bit. 
Uh oh, I missed that completely at the top there. That's miles past the hole as well. Oh, it's trying to come back. Look, oh, it stopped. Okay, can we get this? Come on, let's have one last half decent putt. I've got six inches down, 13 feet. Oh, that's looking not bad. Oh, we just missed. Don't go off. Please don't go off. Please don't go off. <laughs> oh, it's held the green. But that should have been a birdie. And we're going to finish with a par. So, there you go, guys. That is Craig's, or the CLV's, rendition of High Point Golf Course, uh, Golf Club, in Traverse City, Michigan. Very, very nice course. As I said before, I love it when the designers do this thing, bring old courses back to life using LIDAR data and things like that. Absolutely fantastic. And it's Tom Doak course, so absolutely fantastic course. Really, really, really nice course. Again, my gameplay wasn't that great, but again, as I said, we're not here for the gameplay. We're here for the... The history of the course and how we sort of brought it back to life. I hope you've enjoyed that, guys. Again, I do apologize about the, the sort of wonky camera work and getting lost a few times. <laughs> As I said, it is quite hard when you're trying to read off one screen and guide a camera on another screen. But I hope you've enjoyed it. There will be a link in the description uh, to the forum post over at TGC Tours. You can go through the whole article yourself. As I said, there's artwork there. There's loads of pictures. There's pictures of the course when it was actually open. And uh, he's got his screenshots with the hole by hole things like that as well so give that a look and i will also put an, a link to the lido golf course as well at the end of this video so again guys thank you for watching i'll catch you again next time and don't forget stay safe